Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Treble boosters. Yeah. And blimey. on the fourth day, God yes. made treble boosters. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, I'm largely in the dark about treble boosters. Um, other than what I know from what we've done over the past year or so. Give us a clue. Okay. When... Um, guys first started cranking up their amplifiers and getting all of the saturation from the amplifiers um, and they wanted to take that further um, and as a concept that we've talked about all the time if you try and push it with a big full fat overdrive it just compresses more it doesn't really go anywhere so they developed uh, a treble booster circuit which just pushes like from the mids to the top end yep and what happens is because you're cutting off all those bottom end frequencies, um, the amplifier has somewhere to go when you push it like that and produces a sound that just sort of, uh, just, it's um, it's incredible. You think, think Tony Iommi, think... Um, yeah, of course, so uh, Sab the Black Sabbath first record opens up, what happens, thunder and lightning, rain, the bell tolls. Okay. Yeah, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. It's that sound. That's, that's the sound. Yeah. And that is a Laney, basically a Laney supergroup. It's a Laney supergroup. Pre Laney super precursor group. to the Laney supergroup, I think. Um, with, was it a Dallas Rangemaster? Dallas Rangemaster. With a treble booster? That's it. Well, yeah, that, that's, that is the, the Rangemaster, the treble booster. That's what it does. So, the, yeah, the Dallas Range the... the Dallas Range Master was the, like the first one commercially available. Yeah, made famous um, by Rory Gallagher. Yep, Tony Iommi. Tony Iommi. Um, uh, Rolling Stones. Brian May. Did they use, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Brian May. Um, and it's a really interesting circuit because it wasn't actually designed to be a pedal. It was designed to sit on top of the amplifier. Um, but then, seems that anything that was actually designed to do what it does in the guitar industry doesn't work that well. That's right. It's only when you design it to do something else and it but does something starts. else by accident is when it becomes successful, right? Yep. Like this, for example, <laughs> and that, <laughs> and these. Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it's a fairly. The concept is fairly simple, that we're just shelving off a whole bunch of bottom end. Yeah. And pushing that fre those frequencies into the amplifier. The way that the units go about doing it differs from unit to unit. Uh, there's some really interesting ones here. Um, it's worth saying, actually, just for, uh, for if you're not quite on the same page yet, when you overdrive a guitar sound, so you've got your clean guitar sound, when you overdrive it, obviously different frequencies, depending on where you push and where you add the gain will overdrive in different ways mm -hmm. and it can sound sweeter or less sweet or fluffy or all of those adjectives that we use depending on where the overdrive is is happening more yeah and i guess and, and that all depends on what's going on with the amplifier the sort of valves that are being used the apple transformer the speed all that stuff it all yeah. plays a part yeah so they, they are unfortunately named aren't they because um, we've said this so yes. many times on yeah. the show yeah guitarists fear treble generally not everyone but you know not the good ones <laughs> well i don't know a lot of jazzers fear treble to be fair oh massive generalization <laughs> no but in general if you think about you know what people say about strap bridge pickup sounds in some cases telly bridge pickup sounds it mm. sounds spiky they don't like it it's too trebly mm. the last thing in the world you'd want to do if you plug this pickup 
into that amp is add more treble. Okay. Would you? It all depends on the way it's set up. Well, that's exactly what they did, isn't Ex it? Yeah, 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 exactly what they did. Okay, well, let's have a look at... Um, let's start from the most traditional and work our way forward, shall yep. we? Okay, so um, my mate, Dan Whitelock-Jones, um, he's amp builder, preparer, guru um, from... I'm going to say Liverpool, but it might be Manchester. I don't know. So let's start. Somebody showed me a map of England once which had a line from Bristol to the Wash. And from underneath the line it says the South. And then north of it it says here be monsters. <laughs> which to be fair I think was an adaptation of a Scottish picture which is the same which said Scotland. Right. And then everything it's below like the here be monsters. Okay, yeah, I get enough. a nosebleed past Bristol so who knows. Um, Dan's, Dan's a legend, great guy. He, so he made this, um, and every now and then he'll come out with a batch of these. It's a really accurate recreation of the original. Uh, what it does have, and I think all of these have, except for this one, which we'll get onto in a bit, is this little switch. And it changes the, um, the output capacitor, which ch so it changes the amount of bottom end that it lets through. Right. So in... If, um, right, first of all, amps we're using today, we've got the AC15. And New Vox the, AC15 yeah. C1 with the greenback speaker. Yep. And the Marshall Plexi, the rest of it you know really well. Every week. Every week we say it, it just doesn't go in, does it? Pick a number, Dan. A four-figure number. 1987? Yes! 1987X, it's a 50 watt Plexi reissue. How, uh, we do have it through the Palmer Power Pad, which, depending on who you listen to, is either a reactive load attenuator or it's a completely resistive non-reactive load attenuator. Don't know. Sounds good to us. Um, and it is down at stop number four, so the amp is currently attenuated by seventy-five percent. Yeah. And the we've got the normal channel channel crank pretty well and a little bit on the high treble channel, not too much because it is very aggressive sounding. Mm. So we, we set that the plexi up so that it is working. Working. Sounds yep. like sounds like this in fact, if you can do that. Just That's both amps, by the way. Glorious. Yeah, with the strat, not quite so much. I feel all Jimi Hendrix Thor Bramble. Man, with that sounds amazing. It's nice, isn't it? It sounds amazing. E flat for this, uh, which is important. Um, so yeah, the amps are kooken, and mm -hmm. that's important, which we'll come on to. We'll, we'll demonstrate. It's important if you're pushing straight to the amplifiers. Yeah, but there's ways around that, which we'll get to. Okay, right. So let's have a look at um, the DWJ trail booster. So if you can just have a quick swing with us. So in the up position, it's exactly the same as the original really? Dallas Arbiter. It's so honky. It's so honky. I'll go on to the neck pickup. Now we'll do that same thing. It's a very, very traditional rock sound, isn't it? Yep. But it's, what's really, let's just turn it on and off for a sec. Could you just play me a power chord or something? Okay. Okay. 
So for all those people who say, I just want an overdrive pedal that's a bit more and gives me that little kick for solos. I've never had a treble booster because I've always been too scared of them. Really? Yeah. Oh, dude, I reckon you'd be sound amazing with, with a treble booster. And I think it's also, you consider it, you might consider it bad value for money. Because it's, you're like, it, well, I could get a pedal that does so much more. Sure. And the good ones, you know, they, they're they not cheap. The So they're still using, a lot of them are still using traditional germanium transistors and, yep. you know. And, and because of that, they also have a lot of the same quirks that germanium transistor fuzz faces have. Problems in powering. Problems in powering. Problems impedance, in positioning on the board. All that stuff. It's very, very sensitive. So you would put it towards the front of your chain yeah. generally? So generally, the treble booster would go first. The only time that you could argue that it wouldn't go first is if you're using a germanium fuzz face. Um, but this, you know, it just depends on the sound you're going for. So for example, um, I've got the the Analog Man um, Sunface there, and I've also got the Analog Man Beano Boost, uh, which is also a very traditional um, style uh, treble boost circuit, but we've got a three position um, dip switch there. Sorry, three position toggle switch, which you, so you have three different levels of bottom end. Okay. Okay. So a bit like this one, but with three instead of two. Yes. On so the switch. let's hear uh, let's hear the Beano by itself. So if you want to give that a little bit of love. It's killer. Nice. It's so great. It's okay. really, and again, okay, it's called a treble booster, but to me that just sounds like a whole bunch of frequencies, mid mid range, real yep. vocal mids yep. in there. Uh, it's a, a lovely, um, uh, I think it's a G uh, transistor in there, you know, old Germanium thing, and just sounds ah oh, so good. So now, if we have a listen to the fuzz face, uh, which is here. <laughs> Okay, so this is the treble booster after the fuzz face. Yep, this is the treble booster before. So you can hear unplayable for me, but yeah, it's it, yeah. The way that you'd set it up would be different. Normally, you'd have the fuzz cranked, like I have here. Yeah. If I, if I turn the fuzz down now, change the bias a bit. So th this is the fuzz now. And this is the treble booster. Now both on. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a cool sound. It's it's on the edge of uncontrollable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's 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 got a thing. It, I really like it. I think um, context would be everything with that kind context of sound everything. because you've carved away so many bits of it frequency wise. Yeah. I, I, I suppose in context of a mix where you've got bass and drums and everything's happening, then mm -hmm. yeah, I could see how that would be a cooler sound. Yeah, I find it almost impossible to play. Right, because of just that. On the top of everything. Yeah, yeah. Technical term. Like, don't forget, we're going into amps that are already yeah. compressing and doing yeah. their thing. You know, if you have um, 
fuzz, the, the boost cranked and the fuzz low, then you might want to put the fuzz first. Yep. Or vice versa. They're both germanium um, transistors. They both have that issue with impedance and um, no matter which one you put after, it's going to be seeing you know, a lower yeah. impedance at the yeah, input. There's so a compromise. It's, it's down there's, to you. Exactly, exactly, yeah, exactly. Sure, sure. Um, but the, the Beano on its own into the Marshall. When you're just talking about the treble booster into the amp, that the fuller frequency version of it is mm. definitely the one that's I'm preferring to my ears. Sure. But I'm guessing if you were going to run that into an overdrive pedal, that's when it might change a bit? Yes. It depends as well on how... Like, if you have the amplifier absolutely dimed, yeah. then you know getting rid of nearly all of that bottom end and most of the mids as well... Yeah. Um, it, you know, the, the great thing about having the um, the option of adding more bottom end in is it means that you've got options with how you use it. So, moving along from that one, uh, this is my old Keeley Java Boost, um, which has an OC seventy one transistor in it, and again, it sounds completely different um, than than the. The Dallas Rangemaster, um, you could open it up and find a different number of transistors in there. The IC71 was definitely one of them. Um, and this is the, yeah, so this is the, the Java. <laughs> me a lowy. Same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah. Exactly the same thing. Yep. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's almost like if you've, if you've got a Les Paul and a Marshall, you absolutely have to have a treble booster, don't you? Yeah. It's the same... It, what I love about them, I really got into treble boosters. Should just say that we are here in the Vox as well. Yeah. It is on as well, yep. but it's doing a similar breaking, it's breaking job. up job. Yeah. What I really love about treble boosters, it's the same thing with fuzzers. The tiniest little change to that circuit, the you know, different um, transistor, the, just the different way it's biased, they have a different character. So, you know. Are they temperature sensitive and all of that? The germanium ones are, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but that's not OC. Is that is OC a germanium transistor? Yes, it is, and it is um, sensitive. So I uh, gigged with that one for ages, and it would. I remember doing gigs uh, like in summer and in, in like open air, and and you put that on, and I would have that going into the front of my uh, hot cake, and on a really hot day, it was just a squealing, unusable oh, okay. mess. Um, there you go, boutique pedal market. <laughs> what you need is a little mini refrigeration unit that can sit around your germanium 
Perfect. That yeah, that'd be awesome. Like a little. If you know anyone with a Harley Davidson, quite often they've got like this blow up air circulating tent thing that they can put their Harley in over the winter, so that it doesn't go rusty because there's a lot of chrome to polish on most Harleys. Yeah, right. And, uh, and just someone, just someone with a, with a with a fine mist spray thing and, and one of those those but, handheld fans. But I think you could do the same. I think like a little thing with a little fan on it that blew refrigerated air in around it, like so it's set in its own hermetically sealed. See now that would work. <laughs> you know, tell you what. You heard Z it here. Zvex. Uh, yeah. Zvex are the guys to do it. Yeah. Well. Uh, okay. So in all seriousness, mo a lot of modern computers, PCs, um, are. Uh, Simon's just bought a PC actually. Have uh, you? Yeah. He's given up on Mac. They've stopped developing for professional users. It's really annoying. Anyway. Wow. Um, a lot of modern PCs have, have water-cooled chips. Really? Well, water-cooled system inside the thing. It, 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 it's a refrigeration system. It's not the chip isn't water-cooled, but you know what I mean. They have a water-cooling system which refrigerates the machine to keep it running at a low temperature. I had no idea. Zachary Vex? That's where we are. There, there you, you go. go. Okay. So, if anyone can do it, you can. Um, combating that, this is my old made treble booster. From... Shut up, I haven't played the Keeley. Oh. <laughs> So you did something very interesting there. Yeah, I deliberately turned the volume down just yeah, to see. Yeah, what did you notice? Super clean. Super clean. Like a fuzz. Same thing as the fuzz. So, so, so they are obviously inextricably linked to fuzzes. Yeah. It must be a very similar circuit, is it? It's a single transistor. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are, there are definitely similarities there. That's bloody great, though. Yeah. I mean, certainly... I think you, I you sound amazing with a, with a I, I, troll booster. Well, it, it, that, but that mid boost thing, and it's a different, it's a different thing than the fuzz, and it's a different thing than a Klon or a TS808. You know, it just there's a there's a edge to it, but it's it sits in that right yeah. space for you, I think. Uh, well, f me or anybody else, I think it becomes relevant. That question that we've a we've asked and partly answered a lot on on that pedal show is mm. guys who run or guys. Sorry, when we say guys, we don't necessarily mean men. We mean people. Yeah. I've always used guys as a collective for everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone, so it's someone not about... told us off for saying guys because we're being sexist by not including girls. Guys is kind of, you know, we walk into the office next door and say, hello, guys. There's three girls and one guy in there. So, bloke. Anyway. People who use... <laughs> people of any gender or... <laughs> what do they call it now? Gender description. Okay. Fluidity. However you classify. Are we on dodgy ground there? No. <laughs> no, no, no. However you classify. Just keep digging. Yeah. Any... I can't say human being, can I? Anyone. Yeah, anyone who uses an overdriven amp and struggles with that question of how do I boost this to get more. Yes. Yes. Blinkers. This is a pretty good answer. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And it's got... But it's got... There's character 
mm. to them. I just, I just love them. And if you've been through 18 overdrive pedals, try a treble booster. Yeah. Now, this is my old um, Plosive Electronics May treble booster. May after him, presumably. After him. Now, I bought this because my dear friend Dave Gregory... Have we mentioned anyone else? Um, mentioned Rory Gallagher, I'd never actually met him. No. Um, I can honk Brian May. Ah, uh, Simon can honk Brian... Actually, I can honk Brian May as well. <laughs> I have never met him, but I hear he's absolutely lovely. He's a, a wonderful human. I'd love to meet him. Uh, he's a professor of astronomy as well. Yeah, he's Some... over the sky at night for a while, didn't he? Patrick it... Moore. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Big fan of badges. Yeah, um, who wouldn't be, quite frankly. Uh, right, so this is the May Troll Booster. Now, Dave Gregory um, introduced me to this guy. Actually, loads of farmers aren't fans of badges at all, are they? No. No. Okay. More dodgy ground. Um... Just while Dan's explaining this, I'm going to start freezing some more thin ice that we can walk out on too. <laughs> Did you hear the one about... No, carry on. Right. This is a, a silicon transistor. It's, you know, it's not a... Um, the, the guys explained it to me. It's, just, you know, it's not a... Not a um, it's not a difficult circuit. It's designed it using a silicon transistor, which is a lot more stable. And this is the troll booster I used for years. I went to get another one and it disappeared. Couldn't get hold of him anywhere on any forums, anything. So, um, yes, as far as I know, you, you can't get these anymore. But okay. there are ones out there that are similar to it. But I just wanted to, because this is the one that I used for a long time, and it's a, it's a, it's a normal silicon transistor. Yeah. Right? So. <laughs> So there is a capacitor array on here. So you've got lots hence of different the clicky, hence the clicky thing. Listen to it click. I love that. That's great. Have a go with the strap. So again, a very different character from the Germanium ones. But was it? Did you switch between them? I did say. So. I switched between this and the, and the Java boost. Just quickly, yeah, yep. yeah.
So there's there's more attack in the in the silicon version. It's a bit brighter, um, you know, which is I love it. And as we know, pressure is better. More, more is more. It's more. Uh, that's a quick look at. So we had some some traditional. How does he even do that? Who? Ingvi. Oh man, it's just if you. It's a life's work. His is the more is more quote, by the way, and I just... He's unbelievable. He is unbelievable. And he's still unbelievable. Yeah. There's a great video circulating of him when he was like 19. Right. Like, like an early gig. And he had everything then. Everything. Oh, he's still pretty good. No, no, yeah, but I'm saying, at 19... Yeah, yeah. It's not as oh, if I he see, did, by then. By he, 19, yeah, yeah, yeah. he had everything. He was there. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Oh. Um... See, and I, I think it, with all the stuff he does, but he plays with great feel. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and, and accuracy. I remember. Anyway, that's, that's a tangent. All right. So we've yeah, gone from tangent. traditional um, and through the Beano and the um, the Java Boost. So some different um, variations on the Germanium. We've had a look at Silicon Transistor. Now this is the Uno, the Trouble Booster, um, by our mate at. Uh, Bigfoot Electronics. Yeah, Reese at Bigfoot. Hello. We, we really loved Reese's passive octave, Octiva. octave, and also the Bigfoot XL and the King of Fuzz. Yeah, King Fuzz XL, and he also does a Yak Face, which um, we're about to look at, which is also passive. Is this passive? This is passive. Okay. So this is the a, a passive treble booster. So if you remember before, we were talking about it should so be called the passive aggressive, shouldn't it? If you haven't done that, Pedal World, now's your, now's your chance. The passive aggressive. It's so good. Reese, please. Have that one. I, it, 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 I'll be astounded if it doesn't exist already. Yeah. Okay, so the thing with this, which is really interesting, is it needs to be driven with a buffer. Okay? Yeah, unlike your germanium so, fuzz faces. Exactly. Or... So when we're talking about... You know, the, the issue that we had before when you were trying to stack the troll booster with the fuzz, all right, if we do the same thing with the Uno, so let's have a listen to the Uno on its own. Um, so. so that's driven with a buffer, okay, but now if I drive that. Uh, could, you try, could you not drive it with a buffer? Let's yes, just I see. Very warm. It's the treble booster for jazz. <laughs> Very good. With the Very good. to every jazz player on the planet. What I want to do now, though, is I want to hit that with a fuzz. All right. So, if I same thing, but now if I play it with a fuzz in front. Oh, it's like got. A, it's almost got an octavey thing going on. So the fuzz isn't driving it hard enough, but if we do the, um, yeah, it, the fuzz, the output impedance for the fuzz won't be low enough to drive that. Okay. So I thought I thought it might do, but it doesn't. So it needs to be driven with a with a a, uh, a buffer. So here it is again without the buffer. Uh, Dan has a the uh, I say Dan G two has um, a pre game function which acts as a, a buffer, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what I'll do, let me just, let me just um, turn these off, and there you go. So, this is without the buffer.
needs to be hitting a very cooking amp, Matt, in my opinion. Yes, because it doesn't have the output of the other ones. It's yep. not being, it's not boosting. I'll try it with the Les Paul. drive the input of it a bit harder. So you need to hit that one. Yeah, all the frequencies are there, but it just, because it's not, it's not boosting like the, the other ones are. I fear that we're not giving the Uno the environment in which it's absolutely happiest. Okay. It needs to be hit with a buffer. It needs to be hit with a buffer. And, and I think it, it's going to work into a really cranked amp. Right. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the other thing of trouble boost is at the moment we've been, you know, using crank damps. It's not, I don't do that personally. You know, I, I want to get my overdrive sounds and things from the pedals and, but one great way to do that is using the pedal as the preamp and then boosting the front of the pedal. So we want to set the amp up clean? Let's set the amp up clean, yep. Okay, so that will involve uh, turning the, uh, you'll be okay. Turning the um, Marshall down, taking the attenuator out, uh, let's just turn the Vox down for a sec. Look at that. Can you get the top end engaged a tiny little bit? Beautiful. There we go. There Sorry, we go. I couldn't hear it. Stood right over it. It's a phenomenally loud amplifier up to a point at, yes. at which it gets just fizzy and horrible, mm -hmm. um, or brilliant, depending on your point of view. Uh, so now it's not attenuated at all. Mm -hmm. It's literally ticking over. The high treble channel is only just on. So this amp is not overdriving. Same with the AC15. Beautiful. I, so, I came out of the top boost channel and went into the normal channel just to keep the AC clean as uh, the AC as high headroom as possible. The clean sound of that Marshall is unreal. It's spec bloody tacular. Okay, so if I take the Beano and I put that into the amplifiers that we have now, let's have a listen. Let's have a listen. I apologise in advance. Oh, that's you. I mean, that's me. That hurts. It's not a bad sound. It's not, no, it's not a bad sound. But it is just so, so, so different compared to the amp running with distortion yeah just to make that absolutely clear the overall volume of the Marshall really hasn't changed very much at all mm. all we've done is we've made it overdrive less now it's running clean before it was running overdriven and that the difference that the treble booster makes in that environment is colossal it's, yeah it's unbelievable okay 
Now let's do that again, but we will engage the um, the page. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Now I'm going to boost the front of the page with the Beano. Awesome. Massive. Just massive. Absolutely colossal. Yep. I'm so pleased my prediction about... So before, when we had... Could you actually... Would you mind just switching to the Java Boost? Yep. A sec. Use the Java Boost into the... Um, into the page. Into the page. I just want to try something a sec and okay. I'll decide whether... <laughs> Um, my prediction was when we were running them into the amps that were overdriving a bit mm -hmm. I wanted all the bass on whatever bass option it had I yeah, wanted yeah, it yeah, yeah. I wanted it yeah. on yeah. because the pushing the upper frequencies obviously wasn't having any effect on the bottom end mm -hmm. it just felt like it got a bit thin mm -hmm. hitting the page which is in turn hitting the amp harder which seems to be pushing the bottom end a lot more we are yeah. a bit louder as well by the time that's all got going I was I felt like I was wanting to reduce the, the bottom bass end. Yep. in the treble booster which sort of because if you if you get your treble booster and you plug it into your amp and you go why on earth would it have that thin setting mm. in what way could that ever be useful to me yeah and there it is yep when everything's really ha hammering loud and loads of bottom end so you're just distorting those upper frequencies yep. it just finds that spot and punches into it it's it's so cool so Ooh. Like traditionally, most guys uh, associate treble boosters with cranked amplifiers, but using a treble booster as a booster into a full frequency overdrive pedal, like that's the way to do it, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, I think for us um, and you know loads of guys, where you're you've got your your clean pedal platform set up, and there's the clean sound that sounds great, and then you find the overdrive pedals, the gain stages that work with that amplifier, yep. Yeah. Um, and depending on the way you play and the guitars you're playing, you know, you'll you'll find a full frequency thing and a mid boost thing or whatever. But that full frequency overdrive into that onto that clean platform amplifier, yeah. using a treble booster into that pedal is sensational. It's it's another 
it's another really cool take on gain stacking. Yep, that's it. Just want to get my Grissom on for a second because I think he'd like this kind of sound. I just want you to hear the neck pick up on the telly. This so with, with the with the page. It's so good. It's, it's a so really, good. really, really cool option for gain stacking and thought about in a completely different way to your usual overdrive pedal. When we started this video, I was like, hmm, yeah, spiky. Spiky sounds. Spiky. Yeah, which, you know, I can see where they'd have their place and how yep. they'd cut and abandon everything. But come the end, treble booster driving an overdrive pedal, I'm going, oh, okay, there yeah, yeah. I would, now I can see. And you get, you know, this, you get complete control of everything there as well, you know, using the stacking into the into the overdrive pedal, it's a great way to do it. Just that for that that solo sound, where yeah. you just need to chop and poke. Awesome, chop and poke. Mm. That's a t-shirt. There you go. Okay, brilliant guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. That'd be great. Um, massive thank you all. Before I forget. I wanted to do a quick shout out to someone. Um, Jackie Lamb. Jackie Lamb uh, got in contact uh, last week. Uh, Jackie has been playing guitar since she was 13 years old. She's been playing for nearly 50 years. Wow. Right? She's a massive sh uh, fan of the show. Right. And she looks forward to it every Friday. And she's got loads of effects pedals. And uh, I just wanted to shout out to Jackie because I think you're the coolest person in the world. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Thank you, Jackie. That's, that's awesome. Thank you, Jackie. Um, yes. Massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Um, we really appreciate it, guys. It's wonderful. Um, our preferred retailers in Uzbekistan is... <laughs> <laughs> Max Guitar Shapes <laughs> Objects. Very in, good. I don't know. I, I just can't say anything because it would be terrible. Uh, so in the UK and Europe. Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. In Australia. Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. And depending on when the show goes out. Dan, yeah, no, 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 you will have been there by now. I'll have been there by now. Yeah. I'll be contemplating the trip back. You will. Yeah. You'll be on the plane home by yeah. now. Maybe oh, even man. home. Oh, don't say that. Yeah. But really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and in the USA. <laughs> Riff City Guitar in New Hope, Minnesota, which is where their new store is. Yeah, legends, all of them. Um, yes, we do have the t-shirts, we do have the mugs, we do have the 
beanies and we do have the piercing kits. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we might have some sticker packs actually by the time this happens. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. You never know. Um, fantastic. All right, guys, thank you so much. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Cheers, guys. Bye.